Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T470 laptop for use in 2024 and onward. And this particular version of the T470 has a Intel Core i5-6300U 2-core 4-thread CPU with Intel HD Graphics 520. And we currently have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 MHz SK Hynix RAM. Keep in mind that that will default to 2133 MHz. Currently this laptop has a 1366 by 768 HD panel. However, it did also ship with, with the full HD IPS 1920 by 1080 panel if you're lucky to get one. For storage, we have a Samsung PM961 256GB NVMe solid state drive. There's a Intel dual band wireless AC 8260 Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth 4.1. Here we have the rather standard experience of the six row spill resistant keyboard. And there's no backlit option on this keyboard, unfortunately. And of course we have the characteristic red track point and also the standard touchpad, which I do enjoy that has the three buttons up top so if you are using the track point you can easily go down and use the right and left click as well as the middle scroll the case material is glass fiber reinforced plastic which i suppose lends to the thinkpad durability currently i have a lithium ion six cell external battery installed but it also shipped with a three cell skinnier option that looks like this there's also an internal battery inside, which we'll get to once we open up the bottom panel. The I.O. on the left side of the laptop has the rectangle style power input, USB 3.1, USB Type-C Gen 2 slash Thunderbolt 3. There's an air exhaust for the CPU fan, and this would be the slot for the optional smart card reader, but this particular model does not have it. Here on the right I.O. we have the microphone and headphone input, another USB 3.1, HDMI port, a USB 3.1 always on, which means that USB port will still be active even if the laptop is in sleep mode. RJ45 Ethernet port, 4-in-1 smart card reader, and the version of the Kensington lock. The bottom of the case offers lots of ventilation, including for the CPU fan. And here's a port for an optional docking station up here. So before we open this thing up to take a look inside, we need to power it on and start hitting enter until you see the Lenovo splash screen. Looks like we're booting to Windows. If this does happen to you, I'll show you one quick tip that will allow you to access BIOS. So once we're booted into Windows, we can hit the Windows key, type control, until we see control panel as an option. And then we go over to hardware and sound, and then we press change what the power buttons do, change settings that are currently unavailable, and we can uncheck the box that says turn on fast startup, save changes, exit, and let's shut down and power back on so we can access BIOS. All right, so once again, we power on and start hitting enter until we're greeted by this menu, in which case we can press F1 to enter BIOS. Now that we're into BIOS, we can navigate over to config, down to power, and scroll down to disable built-in battery. Now I did mention that this does have an internal battery, so when you go to service a laptop like this, it does help to power it down this way, just so you don't short anything out. Now we can remove the external battery. And with a Phillips head screwdriver, we can start removing all the screws on the back panel. Now you can take something like a plastic guitar pick and start scoring along the palm rest in order to lift the back panel off and release those little plastic clips. So first off, just in case you forgot to disable the internal battery, you can also unplug it from the motherboard right here. Over here we have the NVMe adapter. Now this laptop also ships with a 2.5 inch hard drive or 2.5 inch solid state drive option. And you'll notice that we have a cable connecting it to the motherboard right here. So although we do have a NVMe SSD installed right now, I do suspect that it's running at SATA 3 speeds, which doesn't really differentiate it all that much from a 2.5 inch solid state drive. However, I could be wrong and feel free to leave a comment below if I am. But that's how you remove it and replace the solid state drive. Over here, we have dual channel RAM. And as I stated before, we currently have 16 gigabytes of SK Hynix DDR4 
2400 megahertz RAM, defaulting to 2133 megahertz. Right up here we have the CPU heatsink and CPU fan. If you wanted to replace the thermal paste or clean this thing up, you just have to remove these one, two, three, four screws, lift it up, and the CPU fan also comes up too. Now, I've already performed this service, so I'm not going to demonstrate it. And over here, we have the M.2 port for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And we have an additional M.2 port right here. And as confirmed by the product specification sheet, we can install a small M.2 SSD like this one, and we can use it as a boot drive or extra storage or running it as a cache. And right over here is a SIM card slot. Now, I don't think I'll be going any more in depth at this point. However, if you do have any questions, leave a comment below. I've done a lot of service to the T470 before, and I might be able to answer your question. So for general use, this laptop will be perfectly fine in 2024. For example, I could easily use it as a daily driver for my work, for my day job, using Office 365, casually playing YouTube videos in as high as 1080p, searching up tons of images for reference, and you could even do some light video editing with software like Movavi Video Editor. For myself, I use DaVinci Resolve, and I'm not sure if you'd get the greatest performance with this, especially when it comes to rendering, but you could always give it a go and let me know how it went. The stock speakers aren't the worst, but of course aren't the best. It would totally benefit you to use a Bluetooth speaker or headphones. And still stuck with that standard 720p webcam. All right, so I've got Fortnite loaded up. We have the settings set to windowed, 720p, VSync activated. Frames per second are at 120, but we're not really worrying about getting over 60. Of course, we have performance, lower graphical fidelity, basically all settings set to low, and we're gonna see what kind of performance we can get. So I don't have super high expectations for performance. Um, if you wanna play this game bad enough, these are probably the ideal settings. So we're actually hovering over 30 frames per second, and I think that's pretty good. Let's see what happens once we get into an encounter with somebody else. While we're waiting to run into somebody, we can see with MSI Afterburner running, we have uh, almost 12 gigs of RAM being used right now. So I'm kind of curious how this will perform with more RAM added. We're definitely gonna try that out with at least one more match. There's somebody. All right, we got them. 32 gigabytes of RAM, 2400 megahertz, but of course defaulting to 2133, as I've stated many times in this video. So now that we're running with 32 gigabytes of RAM, um, I don't notice a huge difference just starting out, except that according to Afterburner, where previously we were using just under 12 gigabytes of RAM and now we're using just over 12 gigabytes of RAM. We're actually idling at around 50 frames per second and that's not too bad. All right then. So we're actually experiencing a little bit less stuttering and a little bit less latency. However, maybe it's just because we've given time for the map to load and this is the second match that we played. So maybe the games kind of balance itself out somehow. I'm not really too sure. I'm not an expert. However, I would say that this game is totally playable on these settings. Just to demonstrate that you can play a variety of games. On the T470, I pulled out this game called Love that came up for free on the Epic Games Store. Just to demonstrate that you can still do a lot of gaming and it doesn't have to be a higher end 3D experience. So back in my 2022 review of the T470, I did test out Dead by Daylight and I'm kind of curious how it's gonna hold up now in 2024. As for the game settings, we're keeping it at low, running at 720p resolution, which I think is a little bit higher than in 2022. V-Sync activated, frames per second listed at 60. Let's give it a go. All right, we just started the match and we're, oh, 
accidentally threw a bomb in front of everybody. Yeah, we're averaging around 20 frames per second, which is pretty low. I think I might lower the resolution and see if we can get a better frames per second performance. So we're down to 960 by 540 for screen resolution, but we're sitting at average 30 frames per second now. So that's substantially better than 20. Look at that, we hopped up to 50, 49, 46. So playing at this resolution may not be ideal, but it actually is a pretty smooth experience. And uh, that allows me to label this game totally playable in 2024. All right, because so many people ask about this game and Fortnite, I thought I'd test out GTA 5 with 720p resolution, V-Sync activated. I left the graphics settings to whatever it defaulted to. We have a mixture of high and normal settings. Let's see how well this will perform. Kind of like the Tomb Raider series, this game is truly a testament to how well optimized it is for a variety of different systems. So right now we're hovering in the 30s for the frames per second. We're already dipping down to the 20s and I don't consider this a huge deal. I'm not experiencing a lot of stuttering or lagging. This is still a relatively smooth experience. Performance is actually not really dipping even with this more action on the screen. We're still just hovering around the mid 20s. I think if we were to lower the resolution, we'd be able to increase this to over 30 frames per second and therefore having a little bit more of a smooth experience. But right now you'll just have to take it from me. This game is playable just within some certain expectations and don't expect this to run like a high-end gaming system, of course. So would I recommend the Lenovo ThinkPad T470 for use in 2024 and onward? Absolutely, for all the reasons that I described in the video, I could definitely see myself using this as a daily driver, and I would especially recommend it if you wanted to, say, purchase it from me. But in all honesty, I do appreciate this laptop like I do with many other ThinkPads, and if you're using one in 2024, please do share and let us know how it's going. So I hope this video helped you out. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a great day.